السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is Ahmed Hagadi from SCE Cat Solutions. Uh, today, inshallah, we will uh, make a demonstration for uh, EES heat exchanger. Uh, we received a mechanical uh, calculation and uh, thermal calculation for uh, this heat exchanger. And now we will uh, know how we can uh, extract the uh, information from the mechanical and uh, thermal reports to use it. Uh, uh, during uh, using uh, SEG uh, software. Here we have uh, this thermal uh, mechanical calculation and from here uh, we can figure that the size uh, of uh, this uh, type of uh, heat exchanger is uh, 460 uh, millimeters inside diameter. Uh, the position of this uh, heat exchanger is a horizontal uh, uh, equipment and uh, the type of this heat exchanger is uh, AES. And from uh, this uh, part, uh, from the thermal uh, report, we can figure that the tube number is 130 tubes. Uh, the uh, outside diameter of tube, thickness of tube, length of tube, beach and uh, the layout angle, and the TEMA class type, the baffle cup, baffle spacing, and number of here we have a sketch for the uh, tube arrangement uh, on the uh, tube sheet and here on the left hand side the uh, dimension that we will use it during uh, creating uh, this uh, tube bond. From the mechanical uh, calculation we can get the main elements from uh, the mechanical uh, report and the uh, nozzles uh, on this uh, model, uh, like we have uh, T1A, T1, uh, T2A, and here the uh, uh, nozzles uh, on this model. Here are a list for the materials that used uh, on this model, like for uh, blades, it's uh, SA uh, 516 grade uh, 70 with a normal uh, condition. Uh, and how we can uh, extract the uh, data for each element uh, uh, from the mechanical uh, report. Here uh, on the right hand side, we have an image from the mechanical calculation, which indicates the other uh, dimensions. And you can figure easily that the uh, material of this cover is SA350 LF2 plus uh, 1. And the bolt material here the dimensions of the uh, element okay after uh, reading the uh, uh, the mechanical report and the thermal report we can make a quick sketches for uh, the elements to use it uh, and uh, make uh, the data entry uh, easier for example here we have uh, this channel that channel uh, uh, contains uh, a blind flange a gasket another uh, body flange shell and another body flange here the names of elements uh, on the mechanical uh, report like channel flange one uh, channel gasket one channel flange two and here it's better to make a sketch like this uh, to indicate uh, the data before using SEG to make things easy for example here for the channel flange one that's a cross section of uh, the body flange. And here are the uh, dimensions that are uh, used in the uh, mechanical calculation, which, which we mention it here, like flange uh, face outside diameter. So we can make, uh, make it like that on a sketch. Make it easy. It's the same for the material. Here are the gasket dimensions and the material of this gasket. Another for the uh, another uh, the second uh, the connected flange uh, dimensions and the number of holes hole diameter number of holes uh, the hub dimensions uh, all of that we can indicate it easily on uh, a, a rough sketch like that to use it directly in SEG. Now we will uh, proceed. So those are the steps before proceeding with uh, SEG software to. Uh, use the mechanical and thermal calculation to uh, start your uh, part. 
here, uh, let's create a new project. So from this form, after click, uh, click on a new project, we will make a name for this project like demo. And from here, we will select the location of the project. So we will create it on the desktop. From here, you will find uh, different modules for uh, equipment. And uh, actually, we will make a heat exchanger. So we will select the heat exchanger module. And this module will give us the ability to create a tube sheets, uh, expansion joints, and make a, a tube bundle, uh, tube hole arrangement uh, features. So let's select heat exchanger and click on finish. Now SEG uh, will start creating project uh, data. So from here we will uh, figure that we have the uh, an SEG tree. And this tree, uh, if you select the first node, which is the project node, you can define the project information like project number, project name, all of all of those information. After defining them, you can click on save. Some of those information you can export it to your uh, drawing your title uh, block. So you can uh, make a link between uh, those information and your title block easily. Here for the equipment, if you select the equipment uh, node from the tree, you can make uh, a rename for this equipment. For example, we can uh, name it as AZ5. AZ5. So that's the name of, of the equipment. And when we select it, you can get that you have the design data of this equipment. So you can define the information of uh, this uh, equipment uh, by uh, double clicking on the cell and redefined the values. You have here the shell side, the tube side. So you can define the internal design pressure, external design pressure. And if you would like to know more about how you can import the data to the design data form, you can import it from a Excel external Excel sheet or by filling it. And uh, on our uh, uh, tutorial videos on our channel, you will find more information about this step and how you can deal with the design. OK, now the second step on the equipment, uh, when you open the setting tab and open the equipment setting, uh, you can define the position of the equipment, like if you would like to make it a horizontal, tilted, or vertical. Okay, so you can select the position of the vessel and select the direction of the assembly. Uh, that means that if you would like to start your equipment uh, in horizontal case, uh, which is our case now, you can start the assembly from the left direction to the right direction. Okay. Or you can flip that to start from right direction to left direction. You can define the delivered blade dimensions, which used to calculate the required number of blades per sheet. <clears throat> and uh, define the uh, used uh, units uh, during importing data in millimeter or in inches. OK, now let's start creating the first element, which is in our case, which is the uh, blind flange, okay, this, this blind flange. So from here, let's open elements and from uh, cover, let's add you know, flange one. Okay, and from here, you will find the list of different type of flanges. Uh, for our case, uh, we will select the first type, which is exchanger blind flange. And let's define the uh, dimensions of, of this blind flange. Okay. And the uh, outside diameter of this flange, the thickness of this blind, the uh, bolt circle diameter, the uh, bolt to hole diameter, it's 30 millimeters, number of bolts, it's 20. Rest face thickness and the second rest face thickness. The uh, rest face uh, diameter it's 532. So here it's 532. And the material we can get directly like that and import the material uh, here. Um, okay. Uh, can I interrupt in between? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
can we extract uh, directly from the pvlet uh, file to this or do we need four pressure vessels only uh, uh, every time i i think uh, maybe uh, the big uh, inform you about that for the uh, pressure vessels and towers uh, we can do that because there is enough information about the equipment uh, to proceed that uh, on the uh, exported access database. But for the heat mm -hmm. exchanger, uh, we asked many times uh, Hexagon BBM to uh, make uh, information regarding the tube sheet, flanges, uh, type of flanges uh, of heat exchanger on the report. But the access database file does not include uh, those information. So. We uh, for heat exchanger okay. we should create it uh, like that. And you uh, after uh, during this session you will uh, figure out how much time we can take. I think uh, not it's not yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, more time and uh, it's uh, easier to uh, make it by using uh, uh, the features of uh, SEG. Okay, we will make it uh, for passes. Define the uh, and, okay. Uh, here's the part. Okay. And here the box offset. And let's click on uh, save. Now let's create the uh, the first part, which is the blind uh, the cover flange. Here, uh, as you can see, uh, SEG creating the part on uh, behind. Uh, and if you would like to make a rendering uh, for the element during creation and make a rendering for uh, child's during creation, we, we can select uh, a setting here from the app setting, which is child preview and parent preview. And when you click save, now if you create uh, any part, it will be rendered during creation. Let's try this here. Let's uh, add uh, a gasket. So from elements, let's add uh, a gasket with a pass partition. So from here, let's add uh, channel G1, which is the first uh, gasket on this channel. Uh, select the number of passes here, uh, four passes, uh, and the gasket for the front side, like that. And from here, let's uh, define the uh, inner diameter of the gasket and the gasket set, uh, thickness and the gasket width according to the calculation and the uh, gasket uh, offset and let's uh, define the uh, gasket material here we have this material and let's define it like that and click on save now let's click <clears throat> start as simply now as you can uh, figure the uh, Sorry, uh, I should have add a dot here and click on. Okay, so we have this uh, gasket. Okay, of the uh, for this cover. Now let's add the next uh, element, which is this uh, flange. Yeah, yeah. For this gasket, the pass partition is. Uh, can we change it to double jacket or do we have any option for that? Or it's a single piece of style one it is. In? It's like that, but if you would like to make a separate detail, you can make that. And if you would like to edit on this gasket, you can do that. Okay, but because the outer will be spiral one and the rib will be double jacketed. I see. As, as I informed you that that that's, that type is the available types on uh, SEG. And if you would like to make a separate detail inside the drawing, you can do that. Okay. And okay. and in our case, the channel is on cladded and overlay. I know. So, I know. Yeah, we will yeah. keep this as so that. Okay. Because in the mechanical calculation, okay, fine. Uh, it's, it's not up here. And I will show you that uh, the, the dimensions on the mechanical calculation mean, need to be modified because after adding the clad, the uh, raised faces diameter and the inside diameter of flanges will uh, need to be modified. Uh, uh, That's it. Be, because Correct. in the mechanical calculation, it's okay. But uh, after making uh, the 3D model and the drawing, you will, you will figure that you have an intersect or uh, 
interference between the clad and the rest of the faces of phalanges. So after creating the 3D model, we will add the clad and the modify the dimensions. After that, you can reflect that on your mechanical calculation again and thermal calculation. But keep uh, steps as it is right now to show you step by step how we can create that. Yeah, fine. Okay. Uh, uh, so we will uh, okay, proceed yeah. with creating the uh, next flange, which is uh, uh, a body flange. So from here, you will find the standard flanges, but in our case here with this heat exchanger, we will use a designed flange. Okay, for the designed flanges, we will have this type, which is channel uh, flange two. And from this list, as you can figure, the first type was uh, a raised face uh, like that. But in our case, we need it with a grooved face. So if you take a look to the image on the right hand side, we need to make a groove uh, for this uh, rest face. So we will select the next type, which is integral weld neck groove face, and define the inside diameter. Here, that's the carbon steel inside diameter, not the cladded uh, diameter. So it's uh, 466. And uh, from here, let's de define the end thickness, which is 10 millimeters. The uh, neck thickness. Yeah, Amada, can you enlarge the screen so that uh, it will be little Name, please. readable? Um, enlarge the screen is possible because I uh, cannot read the dimensions. Uh, I think you can make that from your side, not from my side. Uh, you can make a stretch for the screen from your side or increase uh, the view, but from my side, okay. I cannot do that. Okay, the uh, okay, the uh, flange outside uh, diameter six four five, yeah. and the uh, flange thickness is uh, seventy millimeters. The rest face thickness uh, is five millimeters. The rest the face outside diameter is five three five, and from here the bolt uh, circle uh, diameter is five seven. Five millimeters. The bolt to hole diameter is still 13 millimeters. The number of bolts is 20. And the material, we can get it here and directly import it like that. And make this flange direction is flipped. Okay, but uh, let's <clears throat> create it with, without making a flip to figure out the uh, default direction outcome. Okay, here uh, now this uh, flange will be created. And if we uh, take a look from uh, the right hand side and make a section, let's make a section here to show you why we need to make a flip. So the direction of this flange, you can figure that the rest face was, uh, is in, in this side. So we need to make a flip to flip the direction of the flange. So from here, let's flip the flange direction and change the flange direction to make the uh, facing to the uh, gasket direction. Here we have uh, this uh, this gasket. Here we have this connection like this. Okay, the cover gasket and the uh, uh, body flange. Now let's add a channel. So from here, <coughs> it's channel and the end. Here uh, from this can, let's select shell type, define the inside diameter the thickness, the longitudinal welding line orientation, and the length of this can, the uh, weld gap, the material of this can. Let's add another element, which is another uh, body flange. So from design the flanges, let's add channel flange three. And let's make it looks like channel flange two, because they are the same dimension, uh, the dimension, but one of them is flipped, takes the other direction. So let's Click on uh, save, and from here we will remove flip from this side. Let's add another gasket. So from here, let's add channel gasket two, and let's make it looks like channel gasket one because they are the same. They are facing the pass partition and the groove on the tube sheet. I'll click on add. So if you select this channel, automatically you can figure that the uh, type of uh, passes automatically select as four passes, the same dimensions of the previous uh, channel, uh, previous gasket. Now let's click on start. 
Now we have this channel, the second flange, and the last gasket. Okay, now we have uh, the channel without nozzles or pass partition or clad, but keep go on and create the uh, tube sheet. So from here, let's uh, create the tube sheet. So let's add the next element, which is tube sheet. So from here, let's add tube sheet. Okay, and uh, as per the mechanical calculation, it's extended as a flange. Okay, so let's select the type of uh, tube sheet gasketed with shell and the channel extended as a flange. So that's uh, our type. Define the uh, outside diameter of uh, as per the image on the right hand side here. That's the outside diameter. And the uh, left uh, inside diameter. Right. The uh, resin face thicknesses and the thickness of the tube sheet as per the mechanical calculation. Uh, the resin face diameter. And here the uh, uh, resin face thicknesses. Here the uh, bolt circle diameter. And bolt hole diameter is 30 millimeters. The number of holes is 20. And here the uh, material of this uh, tube sheet. Here, let's add a tube passes. So from here, let's select four passes and define the uh, uh, offset of uh, this uh, tube path. And let's click on save. And let's create this. Uh, tube sheet. Here, okay, here we have this tube sheet with a groove like that. Here, so let's make uh, a tube holding uh, arrangement for this tube uh, sheet and uh, proceed with the uh, tube bundle arrangement. So from here, let's come back to the tube sheet and from tube sheet bundle. Let's make uh, a new model and define the. Uh, the inside uh, diameter of. Of this tube. Uh, sheet to define the thickness. The uh, tube uh, inside uh, diameter, so let's. Come back here. It's uh, here's a cube clearance, okay, and uh, the top clearance, clearance, and for the cube passes, let's select four passes, define the uh, uh, pass lane clear uh, pass lane width. So from here it's like that. And that option will give you the ability if you move one of pass partitions, the symmetric one will move the same like that one. From here, let's uh, define the tie rod uh, diameter, the tie rod hole diameter. The same for uh, the ceiling rod and the tubes. And let's uh, keep uh, those options uh, as they are, because here uh, in our case, uh, if we if you select this hole, for example, to uh, convert it to a tie rod, the symmetric one will be converted. So uh, we will not select those options. And uh, here, uh, that's the tube laid uh, out. And from here, let's select the tube layout. It's uh, 45, it's the big point, and let's start uh, drawing like that. And from the bus partition, we will move the bus partition a little bit down. So we have uh, we have this bus partition like that. And the number of uh, holes there, uh, room, it's not the same. So let's come back to uh, here and change. 
this a uh, little bit and from the past lanes, let's minimize the number of uh, holes like that. Uh, it's not the same. We need uh, 31 uh, holes uh, here, 31 holes for uh, this room. So uh, from, uh, from here, <coughs> we can uh, come back here and change uh, the uh, uh, the clearance from uh, the sides and from the bus partition. Let's move that down like that. As you can figure, we have 32 uh, holes on this room and another 32 holes on uh, this room. And we need to uh, uh, decrease the number of holes from top and bottom. So let's come back here and this one like that and click draw and let's move the bus partitions like uh, like that. And we could start uh, from here or we can uh, increase the height uh, at the top and the bottom. So let's make it and let's try now. So from past partitions, we can move the past partitions like that. Okay. Uh, so from here, we can convert this hole to a tie rod. And the same for that one on that side. Okay, we can remove this hole. So we can remove both of those like that. So we can remove them to make a ceiling bar. So we will remove those holes. Make that one as a tie rod, tie rod, tie rod, and another tie rod. Okay, so we can uh, apply uh, those changes and export them. Now, uh, this, uh, this arrangement is successfully saved. Now we can add uh, a tube <coughs> to this model. So from here, from elements, let's uh, add a tube. Uh, to this model. So from here, let's add a tube. From here, the first type of tubes uh, include a standard lengths of uh, of tubes as per schema, but in our case, it's uh, user defined length. Here, that's uh, the length of uh, of the tube. Here, that's the length of the tube. So we will uh, define this value here. And the thickness of the tube, uh, it's like that. So we can directly. And the material of the tube, it's uh, that one. So we can like this. And the offset from the tube sheet, it's three millimeters. Now let's add uh, a tie rod. Okay, so let's add a tie rod from here. So and let's click on save okay from here let's define the uh, dimensions of this tie rod let's keep uh, those dimensions as they are but from here let's uh, define the uh, the uh, material of this tie rod and the not material 7m <coughs> okay and let's click on save after that we will modify the tie rod lens after creating the baffle, uh, the baffles. Uh, after that, we will measure the value from the model and reflect it on the uh, item here. Now we have this uh, tie rod. Let's add the uh, first baffle. Okay, we have a segmental baffle. Let's define the inside diameter of uh, the. Uh, of uh, the shell side, the uh, baffle height, okay, and the uh, spacing between baffles, or the symmetrical baffles, if we uh, take a look to the uh, mechanical calculation here, for the uh, symmetrical baffle for this one and the second one, it's double, double this value, which is spacing 300, so it will be 600, so it will be 600, and the thickness will be 8 millimeters clearance. The material of 
in that battle, the location of uh, the first battle, the orientation will be on 190 degrees. So the cut here, uh, sorry, the cut will be at the bottom, so it will be on 190 degrees. Now let's uh, add a vent, the vent height, and the number of battles is nine. And click on save. So if you come here and calculate the number of battles or symmetrical battles, it's nine. So click save. And now let's add another battle, battle two, and let's make it looks like battle one, but here we will make some changes. The first change is the orientation, so the cut will be at the top, so we will uh, change this and change the location of, of uh, the first battle. Here, the first battle here equals the spacing, which is 300 and the first battle location, so this value will be like uh, that, and let's remove the vent and keep the number of battles as it is. Now let's <coughs> uh, the, uh, define the uh, second, uh, the last battle, which is the end battle. <coughs> so from here, let's add battle. Okay, from uh, the end battle here, let's select uh, the end battle and define the uh, side diameter. Cut on uh, the middle, the thickness of this battle, battle, the clearance, the material, and uh, the location of the battle, <coughs> the orientation, spacing, no spacing, uh, cut, and chamfer. The end, let's click on save. Now let's uh, create uh, those items. Uh, the last uh, part, let's add the uh, floating head. We have a floating head on this one. So from here, let's add floating head. <coughs> and from uh, the flo floating head, let's define the floating head dimensions as bear the uh, dimensions mentioned on the image on the uh, right hand side. <coughs> so from here, uh, let's define the uh, outside diameter uh, of the uh, cube sheet. Either the uh, left uh, is the face. Uh, the left face width, the thickness of the tube sheet is 60 millimeters. The material of the tube sheet the uh, tube length, the uh, tube extension, the backing ring uh, OD, the backing ring. Uh, let's keep uh, those default dimensions. The bolt circle uh, diameter. Okay, the uh, hole uh, diameter is 22 millimeters. The number, <laughs> number of holes is 24. Packing ring material. Material, uh, split thickness, split width, number of uh, holes per split. Okay, the gasket thickness. The uh, gasket inside diameter, the gasket width, and the gasket material. So let's gasket material. Here, those uh, dimensions will keep them. The floating head material. Okay, that's uh, the spherical portion thickness. It's eight. 0.5 and for uh, the radius 3 to 5 uh, and here it's normalized and for the lug thickness let's keep uh, those dimensions for the lifting lug the lifting lug material and the size of uh, the bolt it's uh, 20 millimeters and the stud length here's the uh, material of the nut 7m 
Yeah, I'm not, uh, for this, if we don't want the splice, then we can avoid it. We have what? Uh, if splice is not required, then uh, we can put uh, the dimension of zero. Uh, you would like to remove the split? Plate. Yeah, splice, yeah. Okay, in this in this type, it's not uh, possible. But if you if you have a request like this, uh, our technical team can do that because one of our clients uh, asked us uh, uh, to make an option here for this split to make it threaded, to make the split threaded. So uh, no need to uh, use uh, a nuts on the uh, uh, after the split. So if you have a request like that, you can raise it to, uh, to our technical team uh, or uh, our development team. So we can uh, make it easily, inshallah. Don't worry about that, uh, the uh, updating and making a uh, request. This it's for free for our uh, for clients. Okay. Okay. Here we have uh, this uh, floating head. After creating this uh, floating head, we will proceed with creating the uh, items. So here we will, uh, as you can see, we add a tube, thyroid, and uh, three different baffles and floating head. Here, uh, SEG will proceed with creating those uh, elements. the second battle. <coughs> the floating head items, the first item, which is the tube sheet, the backing ring, Okay, now uh, after creating the uh, floating head, now we have this uh, uh, tube bundle, but without uh, patterning the tubes or making the holes. Uh, one more thing we need uh, to uh, modify, which is the tie rod lens. So from here, let's uh, measure the uh, required lens. So from here, let's uh, measure the distance from uh, the last baffle, or we could change the location of this last baffle a little bit. So from here, let's come to the end baffle and change the location. Make update. <coughs> Can we could uh, minimize this value a little bit with 50 millimeters and update. <coughs> okay, now let's measure the required lens, uh, the actual required lens for the fire rod. So here's the value. So 854. So we will increase that one. 
0.854 and click on save. Now let's start creating, updating the entire rod. Okay, now let's uh, start patterning the item. So from here, let's come back to the tube sheet. And from here, from tube sheet uh, holding, we will uh, proceed with uh, creating the holes here. You can figure that the location of each uh, hole in X and Y direction on this list. So from here, let's click on start holing. <coughs> Sorry. Here, if you uh, take a look during creation, SEG start creating uh, a location of holes <coughs> for uh, for the uh, each uh, tube sheet and for holes of, of uh, tubes like that, and make a pattern for it. The same for uh, the baffles. Okay, now we uh, finish the arrangement of uh, the uh, uh, holding of the uh, this one. So let's make it whole section. So we have the uh, tubes and tie rods on the uh, 3D model. Now let's complete the uh, model uh, of this uh, ETX changer. And uh, after that, Let's add the attachments like nozzles, bus partitions, all of that. So from here, let's come back to the uh, SEG application and let's add a gasket here. After, uh, as you can uh, figure out, after the tube sheet, we have another uh, gasket, but not a gasket with bus partition. It's a ring gasket. So from here, let's add a channel gasket one. So from here, let's define the uh, gasket uh, inside uh, diameter and the uh, width of this gasket, the material of the gasket. Save. Now let's add uh, a body flange. So let's select designed body flange. So from here, let's add channel flange. And uh, we could make it looks like a channel flange too. And we can modify some of those uh, dimensions like the inside diameter because the inside diameter of this flange is a little bit different because it's without clad. So the clad on the channel only, not on the shell side. The end thickness is uh, 12, not 10. The uh, neck thickness. And for the flange uh, OD, it's the same, the flange thickness is 75. The rest face the same. Uh, rest face uh, outside uh, diameter, it's uh, the same. The bolt circle diameter, the other uh, data are the same. Now let's click on start simply to create the gasket and the uh, body flange. So if we uh, take a half section on this model and take a look here, that's the uh, tube sheet with the uh, two flanges connection like that. And I, I think from uh, on that side, we need to minimize the rest phase diameter. Okay, to make a clearance at least 1.5 millimeters from the inside diameter of, of the shell. So uh, things like that, we can modify it uh, in one time after adding a clad on this side, because after clad, adding a clad here, we need to uh, 
decrease the rest face diameter here. And the same on that side, after adding a clad here, we will need to uh, decrease the rest face diameter on that side. Uh, so let's complete creating the uh, model. Let's come back here and from here, let's select can. So it's uh, shell side can one. And let's uh, select shell type, define the inside diameter, thickness, the longitudinal building line orientation, the lens and the material of this can. Click save. Let's add another can because the total length of, uh, of this can is uh, uh, 5,650. So let's add another can, shell can uh, two. <clears throat> Let's make it looks like shell can one, but we will make some modifications. So uh, from here, let's define the uh, longitudinal building line orientation, define uh, the lens and click on save. Let's add another can, which is can three. So shell can three and make it looks like shell uh, can one. Click add and uh, keep the dimensions as it is the longitudinal building line orientation, the uh, uh, length and everything. So the total length for three shells will give us the uh, total length of uh, the length as they're uh, mechanically calculated. Now let's add another uh, flange. So from here, uh, let's add uh, design, another design flange, which is shell uh, flange two. And when we select this type, uh, you can figure that we need to make it with a rest face, not a grooved face. So we need to make this type. So we will select the first type here, which is integral weld neck with a rest face. Let's define the inside diameter, the end uh, thickness, the neck thickness, the neck length, the flange <coughs> outside diameter, and here's the uh, flange uh, thickness, 75, and the rest face thickness. The uh, rest face outside diameter. The uh, bulk circle diameter. And the number uh, of bolts. We have uh, the bolt hole diameter is 30 millimeters, and they are 24 uh, bolts, and the material of this flange will be uh, like uh, that. And let's click on save. Now, if we <clears throat> click on for the assembly, we will proceed uh, with generating uh, three shell courses and a body flange. So let's generate them uh, one time to check if we have any uh, interference between the body flange uh, and floating head or not. So I think it's it's OK. And the last pass partition location is OK. It's laid on the body flange here. So uh, it's OK. All right, now let's add uh, the uh, second uh, or the gasket and the bonnet uh, items. So from here, let's uh, come to here and let's add a gasket. It's a same ring gasket, not a gasket with pass partition. So let's uh, channel, sorry, <coughs> channel G2, gasket number two. And let's make it looks like channel gasket uh, one, but we will change the uh, inside diameter. So the inside diameter here is different. <coughs> the thickness and the width, they are the same. And now let's add another flange, which is a uh, channel. Uh, flange uh, three, and let's click on uh, save. For this type uh, of flange, we will select uh, integral weld neck uh, with a grooved face, which is the type. Uh, define the uh, inside diameter, which is uh, five or five, and the uh, end thickness is ten millimeters. Make and the flange outside diameter. The uh, flange uh, <coughs> the flange thickness is 80 millimeters. 
the rest phase sicknesses five and the rest phase uh, outside diameter here's a bolt uh, circle uh, diameter so the bolt circle diameter is six five five and from here the whole diameter is 30 millimeters the number of bolts is 24 and the material this one like that and let's make this flange as a flipped flange now let's add <coughs> another uh, can which is uh, on it and okay so here let's select a shell define the uh, inside uh, diameter of <coughs> of this uh, one as 505 the thickness 10 millimeters the longitudinal building line orientation and the lens is 300 millimeters the material and let's click on save let's add the last element which is on it and, uh, define the uh, inside diameter select you can figure that you have uh, many different types more than 17 different types of, of Head like uh, hemispherical head, hemispherical head with negative straight flange, conical head, many different types you will find it in this list. So let's select ellipsoidal head as a half of ellipse. And if you would like to make it with crown and the knocker radius, you can select uh, easily select ellipsoidal head with crown and the knocker radius. And if you would like to modify the crown and the knocker radius, uh, it's not a standard type, and you would like to modify. The crown and the knock radius, you can select the user to find the crown and the knock radius. Here, let's select the ellipsoidal head and define the inside diameter five. The thickness, the straight flange length, uh, the thickness is 11, and the minimum thickness after forming is 10. <coughs> and here, that's the material of this head. And let's make it as a flip head now. Let's create the uh, uh, Final main elements of of the heat exchange. <clears throat> I think the uh, bolt circle diameter it's not defined uh, correctly on the body flange. So let's come back here to uh, channel flange and uh, let's uh, check the uh, bolt uh, circle diameter. So the, the bolt circle diameter is six five five. We need to modify this value uh, because if we uh, come back here and check this value, you can figure that the bolt circle diameter is not the same on the uh, other flange. So after modifying it, making it like that value, we can update uh, the model. So the bolt circle diameter of this flange will be modified like that. Now we have <coughs> the main elements of the heat exchanger. <clears throat> the next step, uh, we will uh, generate or create uh, uh, the uh, uh, nozzles on uh, this uh, model. And after that, we, we can add the supports, uh, pass partitions, uh, lifting lugs, a name plate, and add some uh, other attachments. After that, we can proceed with the uh, mechanical drawing. Okay, from here, let's select uh, CAN1. And from elements, let's add uh, a nozzle, which is uh, T1A. And from here, let's select uh, this nozzle from the tree. And you can figure that you have uh, different, many different types of nozzles, like a nozzle from pipe, nozzle from plate, uh, uh, connected nozzle, uh, uh, tangent nozzle, long weld neck uh, nozzle with a raised face flange, long weld neck nozzle with uh, RTG uh, facing, uh, self-reinforcement nozzle with lips, many different types you can select with them. In our case here, uh, we have a long weld neck with RTG facing. So from here, let's select this type and select the rating of this flange, select the size and select, define the location, the orientation, find the material of, of this uh, element define the service of this nozzle as an inlet nozzle and uh, let's click on save now from the calculator we can define the projection from the facing of uh, this nozzle to the center line of uh, of the vessel which is uh, five to five and let's 
calculate and click on save. Now the projection automatically uh, defined it. Now let's uh, define the set well. In our case, we have uh, the thickness is not uh, great, so we can make it as a single fee. But if you would like to make it a double fee, you can select the uh, welding detail like that. Uh, here, uh, if you would like to make a detail of the welding without clad or without clad on the parent element only, or a clad uh, on the parent and uh, nozzle from the inside, and you have a weld overlay like that. Now let's define uh, the weld fillet, <clears throat> which is the A dimension, like that. So we have uh, uh, T1A. Let's add another nozzle, which is uh, T1B. Okay. And let's make it looks like uh, T1A. So let's select it from here and let's make it looks like T1A. But we will make a small modification here by modifying the orientation of this nozzle to make it on zero degree and define the name of this nozzle as outlet. It's outlet nozzle. Let's click on save. Now, if we click on start assembly, <coughs> Here we have <coughs> uh, those nozzles, <coughs> T1A and T1B, with uh, adding joint facing like that. Let's add the channels and nozzles and bonnet. So from here, let's select uh, CAN1 from the uh, shell side. And from elements, sorry, from elements, let's add uh, nozzles. So S1A, that's the first nozzle. And uh, from here, let's select uh, long weld neck with uh, RTG and uh, define the rating, select the size, define the location of this nozzle, the orientation, the material. And for uh, the projection, let's keep it as it is until calculation. And from here, it's uh, inlet nozzle. Okay, so let's save this. And from the calculator, let's define the uh, projection from the vessel uh, center line. So from uh, the vessel center line, uh, as with the mechanical calculation, the projection is 670. And I don't know why you make this projection is different uh, from the other nozzles, but it's uh, it's uh, with that value, which is 428, 428 millimeters from the outside diameter of the shell. But OK, I, I keep it like in the mechanical calculation. And uh, let's click on uh, Save. And from the set weld, we will select parent nozzle uh, flat, <coughs> define the fillet weld, uh, and I click Save. Now let's add another nozzle, which is S1B. Okay, and let's click on save and we will make it looks like S1A. But we will make uh, a change with the uh, orientation and location because they are the same. So the location will be uh, at uh, 5480 and the orientation 180 degrees and the service of this model as outlet. Outlet uh, nozzle and let's click on save. Now let's add uh, nozzles on uh, the bonnet can. So from here, let's select a bonnet can and from here, let's add V1, which is a very event nozzle. And uh, let's uh, select uh, the event nozzle from here and select RTG long weld neck. Uh, it's two inches. Define the uh, the uh, orientation at zero degree, the material of this nozzle, it's bent nozzle. And let's click on save. And from the calculator, let's define the projection. It's uh, 540. Click calculate. That's the projection from the uh, here. That's the projection from the shell outside diameter. 
So automatically it will be reflected here. And let's find the set world. It's nine millimeters. And I click save. Now let's add another nozzle, which is drain nozzle. So it's <coughs> B1. And we will make it looks like B1. Okay. Refresh the node and come back here. Define the orientation 180 degrees. It's drain nozzle. And let's click save. Now we have uh, the uh, the uh, uh, nozzles of of the model the inlet and outlet nozzle and the vent and the drain nozzle on the uh, bonnet. Okay, now we have uh, uh, those nozzles. Uh, as you can figure, uh, this nozzle projection, I defined it, it has bare the mechanical calculation. Uh, that's maybe for some reason, uh, but that's the shape of this uh, nozzle. If we take a section, a uh, half section on the model to figure out the uh, nozzle locations, here it's before the first baffle, and here before, uh, after the last baffle, uh, between the last baffle and end baffle. Okay, and, uh, and here the uh, end baffle location, the uh, uh, tube bundle, and we can figure easily that we have a clearance for thermal uh, expansion of the floating head and enough area after uh, that one. Okay, now let's uh, add some other attachments like the uh, pass partition on the uh, channel. So let's select the visit channel and from internal attachments, let's add a front to pass partition. As you can figure when you select the main element, uh, you will get a list of uh, attachments you can add to this element. For example, here, when we select the shell, you can find a list of supports like Adding uh, saddle, tilted saddle, stacked saddle, leg, lugs, skirt, anchor chair, different type of cradles. Uh, suits the small sizes of uh, vessels like a receiver, small receivers, and uh, like that. All of those type of cradles, we create uh, them uh, as per one of our clients' request. Uh, they are a manufacturer of air receivers in UK. So those types may help uh, other manufacturers. OK, here are a list of nozzles, like uh, a nozzle with external connection, a nozzle with internal and external connection. So if you have a nozzle with internal projection and you would like to make uh, internal piping inside the vessel, you can do that easily. Coupling, a clean outdoors, weld OLED, stud outlet, couplings, uh, a list of <clears throat> different type of lifting lugs. So you will find here, uh, different uh, types of lifting lugs and the trunnions. external attachments like adding a name blade, a grounding lug, Bob David, many different type of attachments, external attachments, and a list of internal attachments like the uh, one of them is uh, pass uh, internal pass partition, internal rungs, uh, impingement baffles, deflectors, uh, bundle retainer, a clad, <coughs> all of that. So from here in our case, we will add a front pass partition to this shell. So pass. Let's add a pass partition. So from this uh, pass partition, we will select four uh, passes like that. Define the thickness, the end thickness, the lift extension, which is uh, on the uh, flange, right and left flange, the chamfer. <laughs> the bin hole diameter, the pass partition material, the orientation and uh, the offset of the uh, pass partition, and the, let's click on save. <coughs> now let's read this uh, pass partition. <coughs> Sorry. Let's take a half section here. 
So here, if you uh, take a look, here we have uh, this uh, partition with chamfered end or a tilted end like that to suit the uh, gasket, and the same on the other side here for uh, the uh, tube uh, on the tube sheet uh, side. And the extension lens, uh, which is uh, mentioned here, which is left extension and right extension, which is the uh, distance from the end of uh, of the shell to the facing of uh, to the gasket here on this side. Okay, now let's uh, add uh, support baffles and uh, let's add some other attachments like ceiling bars, uh, 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 like ceiling bars here and if we would like to add sliding bars at the bottom we can we can do that and we will uh, discuss how we can uh, make it and how we can add spacers to the uh, tube uh, bundle okay so let's add uh, saddles so from here let's select uh, can one on the shell side okay so you you should select the suitable main item for, for, for that, so we need to add a saddle on this uh, can and that on that one. So we will select it from uh, the SEG tree and from elements. Let's add a saddle. So it's let's add the left saddle and select it from the tree. And you can figure that you have uh, twelve different types of, of saddles. Uh, let's select the first type, uh, and we could we could discuss. Uh, on uh, another uh, PowerPoint slides, uh, the different types of saddles and the lifting lugs as a sample and the different type of, of nozzles. But let's uh, create the, uh, our model first and generate the drones after that we can discuss the uh, different configurations and the types for some uh, items. So from here, let's select the lift saddle and define the uh, saddle contact angle. The uh, saddle height as barely mechanical calculation, the width thickness. Let's add a wheel blade. Find the uh, width and the thickness of the wheel blade. Here, that's the material of the wheel blade, the base blade uh, by mentioned. 170, the thickness of base blade. Here's the whole uh, diameter. The uh, whole location and the uh, base plate material. <clears throat> From here, that's the web material, and we have an outer ribs with 150 here the width with 14 millimeters of thickness. Material of the web. We have an uh, we have a, a mid rib. So let's activate the mid rib and click on save. The location of uh, the first saddle, there's a mechanical calculation. And now let's create this saddle. Okay, so we can uh, move the uh, holes a little bit to the center of the base plate. So the offset from the long direction can be uh, changed. So here, uh, the uh, offset from uh, the long uh, direction could be the half of this value. Okay. So the offset uh, from here be like that. Or we could make it uh, as a four holes if you would like to make a second row. So, <clears throat> for example, if we change it like that and uh, make the hole 30 millimeters and I click on save and you click on run, the uh, whole uh, dimensions will be <clears throat> changed like, like that. So after creating the 3D model, you can make some customization like if you would like to decrease the base blade length and make the holes to the inside so the 3d model will guide you if you would like to make a modification on uh, your mechanical calculation 
So that's the mechanical calculation information. After reflecting it on the 3D model, you can figure that for fabrication wise or something like that, you, you will need to make a modification again in your mechanical calculations to suit the application uh, required. Now let's add the second saddle. So from here, let's select and one. And let's add another saddle, which is the right saddle. And let's make it looks like the first saddle, which is a left saddle, uh, because they are the same dimensions, but one of them will, will be with uh, a slot holes and with a different location. So we will make it looks like the left saddle and left click on add. But when we select it, we will change the location of this saddle and <clears throat> make it with slot holes okay, like that. And let's click on save. So we have the same saddle dimensions, but on another location and with slot holes. <clears throat> Okay, as you can see, you can make uh, this uh, saddle with uh, slot holes like that. And uh, with a uh, different type of, of saddle, so let's uh, check uh, one more thing. Regarding the uh, available types of saddles and the options. Here, if we uh, take a look to the different types of, of saddles. You can make uh, this saddle with uh, a straight uh, whip without any edges here. Let's, uh, uh, as you can figure, the whip here will not include any straight edges like, like that. Here we have a straight edge perpendicular to the base plate, and that one is uh, to the center of the vessel. Okay, but that type not include that shape. Another type with a lifting uh, lug. So for the uh, first uh, type, you have three different uh, cases. You can make the web at the left, at the middle, or at the right side. You can control the bottom width of the web. So you can make this web with the straight sides. You can make it with a narrow width like that, or a wide width with uh, wide bottom width like that. The same options for the uh, other uh, types of saddle. Here you have a straight edge here, it goes to the center of, of the visit. The same options you can uh, make the width uh, or uh, at the left, right, or at the middle. You can control the bottom width of the whip and you can make the whip with straight sides like that. <clears throat> the same for this type with straight edges uh, perpendicular to the base blade. Finally, the last type with uh, lifting lugs like that. Another option is for the uh, holing and uh, rips. Here, if you, in some aspects, you, you may need to make a cut here because you haven't uh, enough area to tight the knot. So some specs include this cut on the web to give you the ability if you have a single bolt here on the middle. Uh, so you need to make a cut to get uh, enough area to tight this bolt. You can make the arrangement of holes on the short direction like that or make it on the long direction. You can make the base blade with straight holes or slot holes, or make it without any holes. In some specs, uh, the sliding saddle not include any holes, and it's fixed from the outside by, let's say, a flip the flange or another uh, device uh, with a Teflon below the base blade to make it sliding without using any anchor uh, bolts. You can add uh, stiffening grips up to nine grips. Here for the lifting lugs, in SEG software, you will find many different types of lifting lugs, suits the different cases for horizontal, vertical, uh, small sizes, large sizes, and mid sizes, uh, trunnions and 
many other sheds. Here, a look, uh, quick look for the uh, different types available in uh, SEG and the uh, different dimensions that you will need to uh, modify uh, during uh, importing for small sizes and uh, mid sizes, larger sizes. For uh, if you for this type of cross lifting lift, if you will lift from a single point, you will need to make this uh, uh, type of lifting lug, which is cross type, a uh, suitable type for uh, shifted uh, lifting lug. If you have a body flange, for example, and you would like to uh, make a lifting lug uh, slightly uh, offset from the outside diameter of the body flange, you can use this type of lifting lug or use a, a triangle, for example, or this type of uh, lifting lug. For the uh, for the different type of uh, nozzles, if we take a look to the different type of nozzles here. In SEG software, you will find the many different types of nozzles, like nozzle from pipe, from blade, Long well the neck nozzles according to SME or European codes. Long well the neck with uh, lips, uh, uh, forged hub, forged hub with lips, integral hub, integral hub with lips, rectangular opening and oval uh, opening. We have more than uh, 23 types available on the shell, and those are most common uh, types. Different types of supports like saddles, as we mentioned, the saddle include 12, uh, 11 uh, types of saddles different type of saddles stack the saddle tilted saddle skirt all of uh, all of those types each type of those include uh, sub uh, other uh, types okay let's come back to uh, our model here we have this uh, support saddle now let's add the lifting lugs for the channel and uh, on it <clears throat> so from here let's select the uh, channel and define the uh, lifting lugs as per the mechanical calculation. So from here, let's select the suitable type as per mechanical calculation, which is type two here in SEG. And let's add lug one. And from here, let's uh, define the width and uh, the uh, offset, which is dimension D, the, the uh, offset E, the thickness, <clears throat> this length, the radius is 75, the uh, bin hole uh, diameter of the material of the lifting lug, the location and orientation, it's on 45 degrees, and let's click on save, and let's create this lifting lug. <clears throat> So after creating this uh, lifting lug, you can figure easily this uh, lifting lug is a little bit huge uh, comparing with the size of the channel. So we can minimize it. And it's laid on the welding line. So we can change the welding line orientation and change the dimensions of this lifting lug a little bit. So uh, before that, you should uh, check your mechanical calculation uh, before changing that. But let's change it uh, to show you how we can make that uh, easily. So let's define this one <coughs> the radius, and let's keep uh, this one as it is. And let's click on save to change the lifting lug dimensions to make it a lit little bit make sense. Here, I think it's the configuration of the lifting lug is uh, it's OK. And if you would like to add a wear blade to this one, you can add a wear blade like that <clears throat> so let's add define the uh, dimension a so let's check the image on the right hand side so that's uh, dimension a let's make it 50 millimeters dimension uh, b uh, so let's make it a uh, little bit uh, uh, greater than this value the thickness is 10 millimeters the fillet and that one so the location keep it as it is and from here let's Click on start simply to modify the uh, lifting lug by adding uh, a wear plate to uh, lifting lug. <clears throat> you can add uh, a cooler. Now let's change the longitudinal welding line orientation. So uh, from here, we can uh, change the orientation of uh, the longitudinal welding line 
little bit. So let's make it on uh, <coughs> 80, 80 uh, degrees and let's click start the assembly. OK, so I think it's uh, uh, far from the uh, lifting lug location. And if we uh, take a half section from uh, here, so take a half section like that. So I think it's far from the, uh, not from here. Let's take it from that side. OK, to check if it's near from the bus partition or not. And if you would like to measure the distance of between the this welding line and the bus partition, you can easily uh, measure the uh, distance from here to there. It's 26 millimeters. I think after adding the welding and the clad, it will not be OK. So we can increase uh, this value or uh, change the orientation of this welding line here <coughs> to uh, to increase the clearance between uh, uh, welding lines here and there. OK, but right now let's keep it as it is. One more thing we would like to uh, to check here for the uh, shackle uh, uh, option or how we can check if this bin hole suits the shackle size or not. Here if we uh, open uh, the uh, uh, new items uh, you will find a, a library for SEG here it's SEG items library and on this library you will find a Crosby shackle so if you would like to use uh, one of those uh, shackles uh, standard shackles according to Crosby shackles you can select it uh, from the list <clears throat> and modify the uh, size or the load of this shackle. For example, let's uh, may use a shackle with uh, three tons and uh, 250 kilograms. So that's the shackle. And here that's the bin diameter, for, for example. And let's uh, save this shackle. So from here, let's save this document and come back here. Uh, OK, so let's import this shackle here. So from simply, let's import this shackle and check if this uh, shackle will uh, suits this lifting lug or not. Is there any enough area for the, uh, for the uh, wire or not? <clears throat> here, after adding this, for example, if we uh, take a look, no enough area. So we can increase this a bit. So let's Millimeters or millimeters like that. You can figure that uh, by uh, visual uh, inspection here. Not enough area for the uh, wire here. So we could use uh, another uh, shackle. So if we <clears throat> come back here and increase the uh, shackle, let's make it uh, eight tons, for example. So the uh, rod diameter will increase. And if we come back here and make an update, you can easily figure that the bin hole diameter suits the uh, bin diameter. And here you have enough area for the uh, for the wire uh, or slings to, to lift this one. OK, so that's one of uh, quick checks. You can make it by using the SEG tools uh, during, uh, during generation of this model. Now let's add the second lifting lug on the uh, other side, and let's add another lifting lugs on the bonnet. So from here, let's uh, select the shell and let's add another lifting lug. Two, and let's make it looks like lug one, but we will change the orientation of this one. And I click save. On the bonnet, we will make the same thing. Let's add another channel, <coughs> another lifting lug, lug three. Okay, and we could make this uh, lifting lug looks like uh, lug one and let's click on save. Okay, but uh, let's change the location of this one to make it on 150. Let's click save. 
let's add another lug, which is lug four, lug four, and let's make it looks like lug three. But we will change the orientation of uh, this one. That, and let's click on create assembly. <clears throat> Here, as you can figure, we have uh, the same uh, uh, interference between the longitudinal building line on the bonnet and the lifting lug. As we discussed, you can go back to the uh, on it can and the change the longitudinal welding line orientation and modify it so the longitudinal welding line orientation will be modified like that to uh, be cleared from the uh, <clears throat> uh, from the welding line now let's add uh, a ceiling bar uh, on the uh, on the shell uh, on the sorry for on the uh, Uh, bundle arrangement. So we need to add a sliding bars here. Okay, so uh, from here, let's select the uh, uh, channel uh, or tube sheet. And from here, let's select uh, ceiling bars. Okay. From here, you can make a single bar or uh, a double uh, vertical partial like that. So we can this time define the inside diameter of the shell. The thickness will be eight millimeters. The clearance will be uh, zero. And uh, the, uh, the length of, of this one will be like that. And the uh, height uh, of uh, of this one, as their sketch here, it's uh, dimension H. And define the uh, dimension of this one, the location will be at zero degree, and the orientation will be uh, on uh, like that. And the spacing between uh, th those uh, two items will be like that. And uh, let's click on save. Now let's click on the simply to generate the uh, ceiling bars. Okay, so we have those ceiling bars here uh, on the uh, central line of the uh, nozzle. Now we need to add another uh, ceiling uh, bars on the uh, other uh, side. So we will add another ceiling bar. So from here, <coughs> from elements, let's add ceiling bar two. And let's make it look like ceiling bar one. But we will change the orientation that and let's start the assembly okay now we have another uh, ceiling bars here now let's uh, make one more thing uh, uh, like adding a nameplate and earthing lug for uh, this exchanger, adding tightening bolts for the uh, flanges. After that, we will proceed with a uh, cladding inside the channel and how we can uh, deal with that. <coughs> Inshallah, after that, we will uh, proceed with uh, drawing creation. Okay, now let's uh, come back here and uh, Add a name, a name blade. So let's select uh, channel uh, can one, and from here let's select external attachments and select uh, name blade. So let's add a name blade, and from here let's define a suitable uh, type for uh, for the name blade. 
here you have a, a many different types of nameplates and and from here let's select a vertical bracket uh, for a single support let's see the lens its thickness projection and the material uh, the location orientation the material of the support uh, bracket support weights same Let's keep those uh, dimensions as they are. Let's add an ASME nameplate bracket and the client nameplate bracket. And <coughs> uh, this to be that and click on save. <coughs> let's add an earthing lug. So from here, let's add a grounding lug. So let's select a grounding lug. You will find uh, many different types of lifting uh, grounding lugs. So let's select the second type and uh, keep the dimensions as, as they are. Define the location, click on save, and generate the 3D model. Okay, now you can figure that the location of this earthing lug not located on the saddle. Because in SCG uh, software, we uh, dealing with the attachments to be available only for the main elements. So you can add the attachment to the main element. So how we can uh, move this uh, earthing lug from the main element to the uh, saddle on the 3D model. It's it's easy. Now let's uh, open the earthing lug, and here that's the default constraints uh, from SCG. We will delete them, and now let's <coughs> add manual constraints for this element. So let's select this one and add it here, and make it flush with this surface with two millimeters, and from here to there, let's make it. Uh, sorry, we we'll make the offset 100 millimeters. Oh, let's increase it a little bit. Okay, so we have this earthing lug now here on the support saddle. Okay, uh, I think now we uh, generate the uh, 3D model. One more thing, we will proceed it be uh, created before. Uh, generating the uh, cladding on the shell side, which is make a nozzle holing. If we uh, take a half section here and uh, make a cut here, you can figure that on the shell side, no cut for nozzles here. So if you open the shell, for example, if we open this shell and make a sheet metal flat pattern, you can get a sheet metal flat pattern for this she she sheet blade. It's not include any holing. So how to make uh, a cut holing by using SEG software? That's one more step we will make it here. From opening, let's open the uh, this form. And uh, from here, let's load the nozzles uh, on this model. Now we have all of those uh, nozzles <coughs> created on uh, the heat exchanger. You can figure that we have uh, T1A, T1B, T1A, S1B, D1, and D1. Uh, one more thing here, I will uh, make it here for uh, the nozzle, this nozzle, which is uh, uh, nozzle uh, S1B. It's uh, in SCG, it's located on uh, on CAN1. Okay, you can figure that it's located on CAN1. If you take a look to the tree, SCG tree, you can figure that S1B, it's located on CAN1. But it's in real, in real, it's located on the third can, we have another can here. So it's located on the third can. So we can uh, neglect it from uh, this analyze and we will make it with another analyze, which is analyze interference. There is, there is a, a tutorial video uh, discussing that in deep, uh, give you the uh, different options for holding. So uh, here we can make a cut with, with a cut clearance with two millimeters. 
and let's uh, extrude cut to create a cut for uh, for those nozzles except uh, nozzle uh, in uh, S1B and we will generate the whole of this nozzle uh, separately by the same tool but with another option which is analyze interface uh, analyze interference because this option will give you the ability to detect which is the real item uh, which is located uh, for this nozzle okay here you can figure that we will we we make a nozzle cut hole here for those nozzles with a clearance with two millimeters cut uh, clearance. So for for uh, this nozzle here, we need to make a cut for this. Okay, now let's close this form and open it again. And now let's load all nozzles. Let's remove all nozzles, but right now let's select S1B, and we will make an option here for the which is analyze interference analyze interference this option will give you the ability to detect where this nozzle is located actually located it's not located on the parent item here we add it on scg on can one but actually it's located on it's intersected with can three so here scg automatically will detect that so by making this option which is analyze interference which is it takes a little bit time more than the other uh, option this option will uh, give us the ability to detect the uh, actual uh, main element. Okay, so automatically it's detected uh, that element and create uh, a hole on uh, this element. Okay, that's another option for uh, holing. Okay, now let's uh, uh, collapse all childs like that. Now we have this element. Now let's add a clad to the shell side. And the the uh, how much modifications we need to do after adding the uh, cladding to the shell to the channel side. So from here, let's select the channel, and from elements, let's add an internal attachment like clad. So it's a channel clad, <clears throat> and from here you have two different options. If you would like to include the clad as a separate part of the bill of material okay uh, because it, it may be supplied as a separate sheet and by another way you will uh, weld it to the uh, shell or it's not included in the bill of material as a separate part in this case we will not include it uh, in the bill of material as a separate part define the clad thickness and get the uh, clad material from here so that's the clad Material and the, the necessity of this clad. <clears throat> and let's click on save. Now let's create a clad on the shell. So we have a clad on this shell like that. And let's add a clad on uh, flange number, uh, flange number uh, three here. Uh, channel flange number three. Let's add a clad and make a facing with a clad uh, for this one. So let's open this flange. And uh, by using a technique here, we can uh, make <clears throat> a split uh, for, for this item like that. <clears throat> so we, we make two different, uh, two different uh, items. So from here, let's make it as a copper polished like that <clears throat> and let's add a uh, cladding at uh, the inside so from here let's uh, select this uh, surface and create sketch and make a cut here and by using uh, this tool we can make Define the clad thickness as three millimeters, and let's make clad, and let's select the solid. It's solid uh, two, and uh, from here let's select the uh, orientation x. So we have here a clad on this flange by that way. Okay, 
If we come back to the 3D model, you can figure easily that after adding a clad to this flange, we may need to decrease the, uh, the rest phase diameter of this body flange, uh, of this uh, uh, tube sheet. Okay. So we can come back to the tube sheet uh, here from uh, SEG3 and decrease the uh, rest phase the, the inner diameter here. So the inner diameter, we can uh, increase it by uh, three millimeters from uh, both sides. And let's click on save. And let's click on the simply. <clears throat> to modify the rest face uh, or the inside diameter of the uh, tube sheet to suit uh, this change and here we need to make one of those faces uh, uh, with a clad okay so let's open the uh, tube sheet from here and on that side okay we will make uh, a plan sorry we will make a working plan here and make a split to split this uh, item to separate solids and the first solid we convert the material of this one to lead so copper polished and let's remove this one so if you come back to the 3d model you can figure that we make a clad on this tube sheet by that way so that one will be like that the same thing we will do it on the uh, on that uh, flange and the body flange so Let's open this one. Okay, and let's make a work plan here with three millimeters. Make a split as the two solids. Define the first solid as another material, which is copper polished, for example. And let's make inside our internal clad on this flange. Sorry. Ahmad, this all work we need to do in the inventor only, right? It's not with the SEG. Yes, that's for the flanges. But on shell and head, you can do that uh, easily. Both on the flanges, some uh, you have many different uh, options for the facing and the clad uh, location on the facing. So you can select, uh, create that uh, easily by using uh, the uh, uh, main tools of the Autodesk engine. So now here, when we come back here, we can figure that the facing of the body flange, we need to decrease the uh, facing of uh, the rest face of the blind flange a little bit. So let's come back to the body flange here. <coughs> and for the uh, rest face inside the end, we, we need to make it by seven and click on save. Let's click start simply okay now you can figure that it's okay you have a clearance here so let's make a clad on this blind flange so from here let's make a work plan on zero degree and make split okay the same thing we will select this solid and make it as Copper polished like that, and let's make this plane invisible. Now we have this face with a clad like that. So easily we make this uh, clad uh, on uh, the uh, inside uh, face of this one. By the same way, if you would like to make a clad on the uh, channel uh, or uh, sorry for the bus partitions, you can make that. Uh, by the same way. Here we have the uh, model of the heat exchanger. Now <clears throat> let's check some uh, points before proceeding with the uh, uh, growing generation. Here for the bill of material, for example, if we open the uh, bill of material uh, table, you can figure that we have a list of, of items. Actually, we have uh, 269 elements. Uh, total on the list uh, 47 items. 
Here, for example, we have a, spher a spherical portion of the uh, floating head. That's the uh, di dimensions of this is spherical portion, the material weight and the weight. Uh, here we have an ellipsoidal head uh, on the bonnet. Okay, and uh, here you can figure that the BART name is indicated on this uh, column. So you can know uh, the uh, this item related for which item in uh, SEG bill of material. For example, for this flange, okay, we have two items, two identical items. It's uh, NBS3 has a long welding flange with, uh, with a re, uh, RTJ facing with a class 300, and those are the other dimensions. You can detect that it's related to T1A and the T1B. Okay, and that's the material and the weight of each uh, item. Okay. Here is a total item of the heat exchanger, which are around uh, three tons. Okay, uh, and you can export this bill of material in uh, Excel format. So from here, you can export this bill of material if we select uh, the desktop, for example, and that as uh, home. Okay. If we uh, open, go back to the desktop and uh, sorry. Okay. okay, I will, I need to check this. Here for the external bill of material, if you would like to add some external uh, attachments to the bill of material, like here in SEG uh, model, uh, it's not available to add the spacers uh, automatically from the uh, application, but you can add it from SEG library. For example, here, if you open, like like uh, what we did with the Crosby Shackle, here, if you open <coughs> the uh, SEG library, and from the accessories, you can find that uh, you can get a spacer from here. And if you open this spacer, you can modify the spacer, uh, diameter, spacer, uh, lens, all of that, and uh, save it and include it to the 3D model uh, on, in your uh, project. One more uh, thing, like if you would like, uh, if we open this one, you can add uh, eye bolts if you would like to add it in bill of material as a, to extract as a tube bundle from the heat exchanger. You can add some standard circular washers or base blades, uh, make J bolts, bolts, not all of that U bolt. You can add some <coughs> external uh, attachments to your uh, model by using the external library of SEG some standard uh, hot rolled sections, tie rods, ceiling rods, and some wires for lifting derbos or for transportation tightening uh, derbos. Okay, now let's add some uh, bolts uh, for the flanges. So from here, let's select the blind flange and from elements, let's add a stud bolt. Stud one. And from here, let's select uh, between uh, Isonauts with millimeters or UNC nuts. So from here, let's select one and uh, one by eight and define the material of the uh, nuts as 7M. And for the bolts, it's like that. So let's take that one copy and bolt material. And for the nut spacing, let's measure the required spacing for nuts. So here that's uh, one, two, one, five, one, five. And the length of the stub bolt, let's make it 100. And let's close this form. And let's create this stub bolt. So we may need to increase the length of this stud bolt a little bit. So let's come back here and buy the length. And uh, let's select 
the uh, flange C, which is this is this flange, to add a stud bolt to tight the uh, tube sheet with the uh, next flange. So from here, let's select uh, stud bolt. Okay, and let's click add. Let's select the size of, of the bolt, define the material. And the stud material, and let's measure the required nut spacing so from here to there. Okay, and the total is here. Click save, and let's click start simply. First, we will modify the first stud bolt. After that, we will generate the second series of bolts. Now we have the second set of uh, stud bolts. Now we need to add another one uh, right here. So let's select uh, channel flange uh, two, which is connected to the uh, bonnet, and let's add another stud. Okay. Find uh, size, changes the material. Okay. Material, the not spacing. So let's measure it from here. Not spacing. Here, uh, uh, let's restart bolt, and let's create the assembly. <coughs> Okay, now we have, uh, uh, I think, uh, we uh, now close to finish the uh, 3D model. We could proceed with the drawings after this step. Uh, uh, but let's discuss some tables here. Here, after adding uh, the uh, knots, you can figure that we have uh, knots here for the uh, uh, UNC bolts and stud bolts, now increased on the bullet material, different type of Gaskets, uh, saddle, ribs, name blade, and ASME name blade. And here, uh, another item. So now let's, uh, uh, sorry, let's discuss some other uh, tables like nozzle table here. We have uh, the nozzle table, uh, include the nozzle tag, which is T T1A, T1B, and the service of each uh, nozzle as we defined, the size of each nozzle, the orientation, thickness, flange thickness, uh, or flange class, sorry. Uh, flanger is the type. Uh, flange facing. Uh, if you we have a blind, the blind facing rating, uh, rating and uh, internal projection, external projection. Uh, weld style and the uh, fillet, uh, fillet weld uh, dimension A, B, C. Okay. Now, if you would like to modify on this column and export some informations to your drawing, you can select it from export the select the required information and to export it to uh, your drawing from here a list of, of flanges a list of fittings if you have a fitting a nozzle orientation that's the nozzle orientation and material uh, list like flange cover material and nut and bolt material gasket material a list of materials used in this uh, project okay now let's uh, uh, start creating uh, the drawing. Uh, before that, uh, we we can discuss uh, some options for the units here. If you would like to change uh, the format of the size of the nozzle from NBS, you can make it, and then 
you can make it NBS between brackets then, or uh, between brackets NBS and the 10. You can select the stable format, which you would like to export in your group, in your tables. Sorry. And the same here for dimensions. If you would like to modify uh, the dimensions, let's check one of those, for example. Here, if we, if we select millimeter uh, and the inches between brackets, and I click Save. Now, if you open the bill of material here, you can figure that the uh, inside the radius of this spherical portion, here that is a value in millimeter, and between brackets in inches, the same for the thickness of this one, here, that's the values between uh, brackets. Okay, uh, let's come back and change it uh, in. Uh, uh, and if you would like to make it in a fraction option, by the way, you can select the uh, fraction value. And if you click on save, now let's let's change it to make it uh, inches and a millimeter, for example. And if you click save, now if you open the bill of material, <clears throat> you can figure that the value here will be in inches with a fraction value. So uh, it will be uh, like that. You can figure that here, and that's the uh, inside diameter in millimeters. So many different options to uh, change the uh, format of the uh, dimension, <clears throat> and the same for the nozzle size. Now let's click on uh, Save, and uh, let's proceed with uh, drawing a creation. So from here, let's click on uh, Create drawing and uh, from here let's select the size of the drawing as a1 <clears throat> and from uh, the uh, active view you can select the required views in your drawing. here we have an elevation view and let's add a right view and let's make the spacing between them with four centimeters so the spacing here defined it in centimeters and uh, for the uh, orientation, here uh, for the elevation view orientation, if you if you take a look to the this model, so if we define the left view as the elevation view here, if you take a look here, so if you select the left view here for, for the elevation view, so that view will be the elevation view. Okay, so if you would like to make this view, which is the right view, so the blind flange will be on the right side and the uh, head will be on the left hand side so you will select the right view and if you would like for example make it from top like that so the view the elevation view will be like that in our case we will select the left view that view okay, as the elevation view so from here let's select the left view and make it with hidden lines so the hidden lines will appear and if you would like make uh, only the visible lines appear, you will select uh, this option. And if you want to make it colored, you can make, you can select uh, this option. Here, let's define the location of uh, the, this view inside the probing, and define the location of this one, define the scale. Those values are roughly values. We will define it after creating the uh, drawing to uh, adjust the location of views inside the drawing. Here, let's uh, select some tables like uh, bill of material table, design data table. <coughs> let's select the nozzle uh, table. By the way, you can add uh, nozzle load table uh, here, and I will inform you how we can uh, do that. So uh, from notes, you can add notes. If you would like to import it from an external Excel sheet, you can do that. And if you would like to edit or, so for example, if you select this uh, note, for example, you can make an edit on it like that. After that, you can accept it or you can delete it or uh, add another note. Okay, uh, for the welding styles. So let's select the suitable welding style. So we will select this file for the uh, longitudinal weld, uh, welding lines, and that one for the circumference welding uh, lines. Select that for the flange with <coughs> with uh, nozzle, okay, uh, with a single uh, V. Okay, let's remove this one. Select that one for uh, the nozzle collection. We haven't a uh, nozzle with rebad, so you have a huge library for. Um, the uh, nozzle uh, welded, welded details, you can select 
from them the required will detail in your uh, case and let's click on save now if you would like to add a client document list like process data sheet mechanical data sheet any other uh, aspect for example so you can add those documents here on the uh, client document list the same from your side if you you will submit a mechanical calculation you will submit a detailed drawing for uh, nozzles a detailed drawing for saddles uh, transportation drawing so you can uh, add a list of that like uh, <coughs> uh, transportation number and dwg number you can add something like that mechanical calculation okay like that so you can make a list from your documents that you will submit okay now we have uh, those tables here and uh, for the title block we will uh, make uh, create a drawing uh, name like general arrangement and here that's the document number okay, and for the revision table let's select this row and make edit so it's revision zero should for review okay and for here and if you would like to add some empty rules yeah you can do that and for the design style here this uh, tab will give you the ability to increase the number of sheets they're drawing for example if you have a uh, huge equipment and this equipment include uh, a lot of information and you would like to uh, separate the bill of material on a separate drone so let's uh, check that if we open uh, a sample drone here for for example for uh, this equipment okay like something like that and you would like to separate the bill of material and Sorry. If you would like to separate the bill of material here on a separate sheet, you can do uh, that. Another one here, another sample. You have a lot of information on the first sheet, so you can separate the bill of material because it's a little bit huge. It will not uh, come here on this uh, drawing, so you can separate it on a separate sheet like, like that. So from here, you can select the number of sheets that you would like one sheet two sheets or three sheets and move the table to another uh, sheet for example the birth material you would like to move it to another sheet so you can move it to a selected sheet from here after defining the number of sheets now let's select save but before exporting that let's save those information uh, i will uh, uh, inform you how you can add a nozzle loop and create a nozzle load table in your drone. Here for the nozzle load, for example, if you select uh, the nozzle and from nozzle load, you will be able to open the nozzle load uh, uh, form and you can define the loads uh, here, like, let's say something like that. And click on done. If you open the nozzle load table here, you can figure that you have a loads for nozzle uh, T1A. So easily, when you generate your drawing, if you open the generate form again and open the tables, when you select a maximum allowable nozzle loads, it will appear in your uh, drawing. Now let's create a drawing. Now we have uh, the uh, drawing creation. Here you can figure that the size of the drawing modified automatically, the nozzle table filled automatically. Now the bill of material is created and will be located uh, on the right place on the drawing. Here, that's the bill of material. The uh, design data table. Here, yeah, as you can figure that the, we have an, uh, because a lot of information, no enough space for uh, the design data and the bill of material. So that may, uh, lead us to change the location of the bill of material table and change uh, the uh, column width 
for uh, the rows to minimize the total height of the bill of material table. Now you can figure that the nodes uh, nozzle table, nozzle allowable, uh, maximum allowable nozzle load, and here we have the weld details for nozzles will appear on uh, the drawing like that. <coughs> Okay, now we have uh, the data on our model. We can uh, move the bill of material manually from here to there, for example. Okay, and modify the uh, column width. So we can increase the width of this uh, row a little bit. So from the width, we can increase that to, let's say, 50 millimeters. And let's check that. Okay, it will. Minimize the height a little bit so we can increase it. Maybe I think it's okay now. Let's accept that and move the bill of material down here. Okay. Okay. We may need to uh, change the location of those tables. Let's move those tables here. And the same maybe for uh, the nodes let's move nodes here and uh, change the location of the, those views we can change it manually or we can change it from seg itself so if we come back here and from drawings view we will change the location of uh, the uh, in x direction so the x direction which is the location from <clears throat> data point here so it will be let's say on 34 centimeters from bottom and keep the y location as it is or we can move it a little bit let's make it 33 and uh, decrease the spacing between the two views and let's click on create now the location of uh, this sorry i changed the x direction not the y direction sorry so let's come back here for the drawing and from here, let's. It was uh, 30 millimeters, and that was uh, 38. Okay, and click read drawing. So now we will uh, update the location of this uh, visit. We can move it a little bit up, or uh, it's up to you. So we can increase the y direction a little bit. So let's come back here. And for the Y direction, we can increase that 41 and click on create. So we increase it with three millimeters up, uh, centimeters up like like that. OK, now if you would like to make this view without color and make it with hidden lines, how we can do that? As we discussed from this view, if you would like to generate a drawing from uh, from here, you can make this view without color. So we will remove the shaded type and make it with hidden lines. So, so let's select uh, hidden lines from here and click on create drawing. So by that way, we can modify the style of lines and the by uh, making the hidden lines available, uh, visible like, like that way. Okay. Now let's add some uh, balance and uh, item definition for uh, those items uh, by using SEG tools. Here, from here, let's add a center line for uh, this uh, index exchanger. So that's the uh, center line here, and we have this center line there. And let's move this title a little bit down here, and the elevation the same. Let's move it a little bit here, and let's add some center lines for nozzles. Saddle or the nameplate to define the location of the nameplate, the second saddle, those nozzles, the lifting lug location, and it's the same. Now, if we select the balloon and by selecting a nozzle tag number, when you select this nozzle, after selecting a nozzle tag number from here, you can add the nozzle tag as per your uh, SEG tree, like that. So we have 
the nozzle tag like that and the second nozzle which is this one here so by using this tool from uh, scg which uh, give you the ability to define the name of the element as bare uh, your definition on scg3 now we have the name of elements sorry Okay, this nozzle. Continue. That one. Like that. And the lifting lug here. Like that. Now, if you would like to add some other balance to this balloon, like we have on the same location, we have this lifting lug, like adding it uh, like that. We can do it by that way. To define the uh, reference point, we can select uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, view from here and define the location of uh, the uh, uh, of the datum uh, point from the facing, for example, or, or from the flange here, it's uh, up uh, to you to define the uh, the datum uh, line in your uh, model. Okay, so let's select the location here for for this nozzle. That one, the name blade, and for uh, this lifting lug and that one here. So we can move both balloons a little bit up here. And that one, like that. So it's a reference to the datum line here. So if you would like to make this datum line invisible, you can make it like that by hide this uh, datum line. And you can define it from the view by that way. So let's add this line as datum line. And let's clockwise like that. Increase this one and make this one as a, a center line like that. And let's click on finish. So that's the datum line of uh, as, a, as a reference data line. The same thing we will do it at the bottom here. So for this saddle, the second saddle. Okay, and we can move both panels. And if you would like to, it's, it depends on how you can, how you will produce your uh, drawing, uh, the style of the dimensions, all of that you can control it. If you would like to change the style of dimensions, change the reference point. For example, if you would like to uh, add the dimension from the shell start point like that, you can. You can do that easily by adding the dimension from here to there, like that. So that's the spacing of between uh, elements. So that's the spacing between <coughs> saddles to the shell end. So that's the shell end, like that. And the location of this nozzle from the facing of, of this flange, you can you can do what would you like to do. So here, let's add the uh, shell pins. So that's first shell pin. So let's add it like that. The second can, and that's can C. So we can measure it from here to there. So we can move it looks like can and you can copy properties of this one here and there and modify the tickets like the foo and 
and by that way you can uh, generate your uh, drawings. That's regarding to the GA. Uh, you can, uh, if you. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi. Excuse me. Yeah. Yes. Hello, Hamid. Yes, I'm hearing you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got uh, another meeting I've got to prepare for, so I'm going to have to leave now. But uh, it's been a very interesting and informative uh, session. Thank you. So, uh, Linson, can you just finish off the last bit, and then we'll speak later. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, so yeah, anyway, thanks very much. It's been uh, very, very interesting. So I do appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for your valuable time. And uh, uh, by the way, you can uh, go through our uh, training videos for uh, heat exchangers and vessels, and you will find a lot of information uh, uh, included on, on those tutorial videos. Uh, yeah. The session may be for four hours or five hours, so it will include a lot of information you can uh, Take it as a guide if you would like to know how you uh, generate uh, yes. an external yeah. item or something like that. Thank you for your uh, valuable time, and I hope that we can cover some of your uh, questions. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, once we've uh, discussed with Ensign, we'll come back to you with any other sort of questions or queries we may have. Okay, thank you so okay. much. All right, all right. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Deba, for your time. Uh, thank you. Hope the session was good. Okay, let me stop the recording.